Today's video, we're going to be breaking down a little inside the mind gameplay for you guys. Hope you enjoy the video, and we're going to get right into it. Running the dollar defense on ebook or my dollar defensive ebook on defense, and then I am running my uh, Jets offensive ebook on offense. Really liking Jets right now. I actually don't know that Jets is the best offense in the game. I think the bunch strong offset is 100% the best off offensive formation in the game. But I think that potentially the Bears playbook, just because I think tight slots uh, potentially could complement uh, the formation a little bit better than some of the complementary formations in the Jets playbook. However, the Jets playbook does have literally every formation in the game, except for tight slots, unfortunately. The tight offset tight end formation is still good. I do think you need hot route master for tight offset. And I'm, I kind of went back to Andrew Luck, honestly, just because I wasn't really using um, a lot of the routes that I had in my uh in my other in my other uh with with cj stroud so anyways want to talk a little bit more about read progressions today want to talk about being intentional offensively defensively and just kind of explain uh just a couple of thoughts i'm actually trying out a new route combo so you can kind of tell me if you like it or not i don't know if it's that good I, it 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 looks good to me uh with what it could potentially do but it just I don't know. I don't know if I can get it right. So we'll see. Uh, he's playing. It's really good for press dollar and any kind of press alignment on the outside. I think this route combo could be pretty good. And the reason why is because this crosser should pull an outside third. Let's see if it does here. See how it kind of pulls him. And then the way that the game works this year, if you possession catch on the sideline, a lot of times you'll just catch the ball. So even if they do have deep out zone KO, and this is a great way to attack the left side of the field, um, or to attack the solo side of the field without giving away um, giving away the fact that we're going to run a right side flood. So that's kind of what I was uh, thinking with this. Goes with the cloud flat, able to throw that right over the top, and we're on the board early. So I uh, did want to talk a little bit about being intentional uh, with your system, being intentional with your play calling, and just kind of some things I've been working on. There's this quote that I tweeted out uh, on Twitter. If you guys don't follow me on Twitter, uh, I'll leave a link to that in the description of the video. Uh, I don't really, I, I kind of honestly, honestly, just tweet whatever I want. <laughs> um, there's really no like, you're not, I don't do any, I don't do a ton of tips on stuff. I just kind of tweet thoughts and uh, and, and repost a lot of the a lot of uh, things I find interesting. So if you guys want to check that out, um, just another way to kind of uh, follow me and, and 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 see what I'm talking about or thinking about. So one of the things uh, is this quote I tweeted it out today, and basically uh, basically what actually I guess it's not called Twitter anymore. It's called X, whatever. I don't really, you know, I X'd it out <laughs> um, today. Anyway, uh, so I came across this quote and the, the quote, and I've, I've heard this quote before, but I do think it's just like, you know, sometimes you hear it in different settings of your life and it means different things to you. And so the quote that I came across was essentially this. It says, it's by, I think, W. Edwards Deming, which I'm not even sure, you know, he's some guy that's done a lot of stuff. I'm not sure exactly what he's done. Don't know a lot about the guy, but I just know his quote really grabbed me and it said this, it said, uh, the system or your system is perfectly designed to get you the results that you are getting or that it is getting you. So if you um, essentially want to change your results in any area of life, you need to look at your system. And I find this to be very, very true. I mean, it's true in literally every area of life. It's true in the gym. It's true in the um, eating department. It's true in reading. It's, it, literally every every area, every discipline, no matter whatever the um, and, and, and honestly, if you think about Madden to a degree, at the highest of levels, Madden is a discipline. Um, it's a game at the end of the day, but being good at Madden requires uh, discipline. It's a skill. Um, it's, it's, it's all of those things. It's deliberate practice. In fact, I actually did some research the other day, thought I'd share it with you today, um, that actually said that video games is one of the one areas of your life where it's, it's actually really seamless to enter into a flow state. So if you're just playing the game, like not, not watching videos, not watching Twitch, not watching or whatever, but if you're just, if you literally just log on to the game and you just play it for what it is, right? You don't try to do too much with it. You just play the game. You just, you just come on, you, you, you play your head, head games and you, you, you kind of do it distraction free. It's one of the only places in life that you can, it's not just Madden, but it's pretty much any video game um, this applies to you can actually enter into a flow state and the flow state is the highest form of cognitive performance. It's where a lot of the deepest connections um, it, it come from, right? So just playing the game and uh, just, just literally just, 
playing it and thinking about it as you're playing it and maybe have some music on, but really like at the end of the day, you're just kind of playing Madden for what it is. You can literally enter a flow state, which is the, like I said, the highest uh, form of cognitive performance that, but w that we're aware of. So as humans, so look at that mid zone KO into a lurk artist. That's why you put peppers and moss at slot corner. Um, no, so anyway, so I'm thinking about all that kind of stuff. And uh, actually, while we're thinking about that, I'm going to pause this. Uh, he quit, and we'll get into another game. All right, boys, we're back. So uh, let's talk about this. So a couple things. So number one, the system you have is, is perfectly designed to achieve you the results that you're achieving, right? So that's kind of point one. So essentially, the system, uh, any system is, a system is just a collection of habits or a collection of processes that lead you to an outcome, all right? So again, if we just want to simplify system, one of the simplest things is if the goal is, and I'm going to use just kind of a, something maybe we can all understand. If the goal is to have clean teeth or fresh breath, the system is brushing your teeth, flossing your teeth, mouthwash, all of that stuff. It's the, it's the process by which you achieve whatever the goal is that you have. Therefore, it, whatever you are actually achieving, whatever your results are currently, they are a result of your current system. So if you want to change your results, you have to change your systems. Uh, I think it's a super, like, it's, it, it's kind of like, okay, yeah, that makes a lot of sense, like, but it's really not like that complex. Like, so why is that hard to do? And I think it's hard to do because of the fact that we're not intentional about our systems. We actually fall in, we fall into our systems more than we create our systems. We fall into our habits more than we create our habits, right? And this happens not just in Madden, it happens in literally everything, okay? Um, so yeah, you didn't know that by being a subscriber of the channel, you get all this good life advice and everything beyond just Madden. But so with that in mind, um, what I was what I was going to attempt to talk about today with you guys is this idea of how can we take a logical approach to a video game. Um, obviously, Madden is a video game, but at the end of the day, and this is something that's super super important to understand, any really good player, any really 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 good player will tell you that the one of the first ways to lessen or shorten the gap between you and somebody that's really good at this game would be to increase your knowledge of certain things. For example, your knowledge of how to pick up blitzes, your knowledge of how to um, you know, stop the run, your knowledge of how to slide protect, your knowledge of how to stop bubble screens, your, your knowledge of, of how to do uh, a lot of things. You need the knowledge, right? And then once you, once you have the knowledge, then you arrive at this kind of other uh, point at which really the main thing is the system, right? Really the main thing is your execution of that, which quick little tip here for you. I just figured this out about this formation. I never knew this. Um, but like, so you see here, uh, let me see if I, ah, I messed my adjustment up. It didn't work. That sucks. Mid zone, mid zone. Yep. Um, real quick, little pro tip about this or just something I just figured out. Actually, it's not pro tip, just tip. Um, if you, if you uh, man somebody up when they're in motion out of this formation, which oftentimes it's going to be this tight end, you can actually take away that little swing pass that everybody likes to throw. So that's just a way that you can kind of get aggressive. I would just man up the slot corner. Um, if they So you see how I kind of held down my man up keys? That should be a mid zone KO. I don't know how that didn't KO. My user's terrible. Um, so again, back to the conversation at hand. So those are some basic principles for systems why systems are important, and let's talk a little bit about uh, how that all applies to Madden. So uh, one of the ways that that applies to Madden is your read progressions offensively, even down to your play calling offensively, to your user on defense, to your adjustments on defense. All of these things, again, back to the, the system is designed to get you the results, all of these things play into your skill level of a Madden player. Like how good are you at making adjustments? How good are you at, um, how good are you at reading the defense? How good are you at executing? Uh, how good are you at uh, not throwing interceptions? How good are you with your user? I would say my two weakest points as a Madden player right now that I need to improve. Number one, I use her, but I don't really use her with intention, especially against a formation I've never played before. And then uh, number two, I would say like, reads, but I do think my reads are getting better. Um, you could say pocket presence for me uh, is something I definitely need to get better at. Um, but I think ultimately the thing that I really need to get better at is uh, defensive adjustments, 
I really think that, you know, it just matters so much. Like you could play the same defense, like, but if I run it versus if Henry runs it, even though they're the same like core defensive system, because I don't optimize my adjustments out of it, you know, it doesn't really matter. So um, those, that's kind of an example of what I'm getting at. So anyways, uh, let me see if I can get that man up. Yeah, see how you can man that up when it's motion like that? I think that's pretty crazy. Actually, crazy adjust right there. I didn't know you could do that. I didn't know. You, I thought you couldn't adjust or couldn't audible um, or change your play when they start to go in motion. So that's a little underrated tip. So one of the other things that this all kind of like crosses crosses into is the logic behind the play call. Um, if if you especially offense, I think it matters a little bit more offensively than defensively because if you think about it. In, the, in a defense, you kind of, uh, from, from everything that I've, I've studied, defense is, is essentially responding to the threats that the offense, the threats and the tendencies that the offensive player shows you. So if they show me that they are, they're wanting to do a specific thing, might be, might be to run the double corner route play out of, out of uh, Bunch Strong, or maybe they want to run verticals or double posts, right? Whatever their powerful play is, their main play that they want to run all game long. I have to defensively come to the table with adjustments for that play. At the same time, I do think there is a way in which you can arrive at a fairly logical approach to defense. And let me explain. So, um, why is free safety zone blitz so good and how have we optimized it? Well, it's really good because it is the play. It's the only play in Madden 24 that allows you to get the most amount of pressure um, doing the least amount of uh, blitzers, right? That's, that's one of the big things. So you can get the most amount of pressure with the fewest amount of blitzers. Pretty much universally true about this defense. The other thing that's true about this defense is it allows you also to create the most amount of coverage options for uh, different formations. So you have a lot of different ways at which you can create really good coverage defenses that can take away um, space. Again, I've said this before, uh, but on offense, every offense is trying at the core, they're obviously trying to score, but the main thing they're also trying to do and the way route, combo, route, route combos in Madden and in real life, by the way, um, are designed the best of the best route combos create the most amount of space. They're trying to attack uh, space, and that is the biggest thing that you, you see. Uh, a good offense will create space or attack space for uh, with with the use of. They will use route combinations to open up space to be able to throw the ball. That is that is the foundation of offense. So in in the defensive landscape, the goal of the defensive player, as I just and you see him kind of doing this here with this little motion. I got to respect the bubble screen, and then he's throwing this little route in behind it. Um, so defensively, what our goal is uh, as a defensive player is our goal is we're trying to uh, constrain the space on the field. That's our primary objective uh, when we're playing defense is we're trying to limit the space that is available to be thrown. So this is why as a defense, we do a couple of things to arrive at that. One of the things we do to arrive at that is we constrain the uh, windows in which the most popular passes are thrown. If you think about Madden, this is why Double Mabel is really a, a good uh, defense, is because the whole uh, logic behind Double Mabel is we want to force the opponent to have to throw the ball in the middle of the field because most people in Madden divine, design route combinations to throw outside uh, on the outside of the field. Why? Well, because our user is in the middle of the field. The user is the most important player on defense because it's the one player that they don't really, they can't really, they can manipulate the user, but it's the most unpredictable player defensively, right? So again, when I said one of the keys for me to be a better defensive player is to be better um, with my user, uh, that's kind of what I'm getting at. And that's why I'm saying that because uh, it truly, and it's true, it's, it's not just a fluke here. I actually call it really... And see this formation, it's like formations like this that I really struggle against because I just don't understand, like, I, I, I they're just kind of hard to understand. And I've talked about this a little bit before. I wish my adjustments would register. That'd be fantastic, Matt. And if you could let my register, my adjustments register. Um, I've talked a little bit about, about this before, but the more complicated your opponent gets, 
my opinion, the more simpler you should get defensively. So if we come back to free safety zone blitz, we say, okay, why is this the best defense in the game? Well, if you think about the defense, you have deep out zone knockout on your outside cornerbacks. So uh, what that's designed to do uh, by having the deep out zone KO, and, uh, I'm just slow on my adjustments. Uh, what deep out zone KO is designed to do systematically is it's designed to obviously KO outside of the numbers. Now I equip mid zone KO and I stack the two. So I think Rondé Barber is the best corner in the game because you can get the deep out zone and, and mid zone KO stack for four AP, which then allows you to either a go with Ty law, which he only has 91 speed, I think, but he does fine for me because um, I just really value abilities at this point. Just, kind of the, where I'm at with this game. But you could also put Bo Jackson out there if you wanted to. He has a little bit more speed if you're worried about that. Anyway, that being said, so we have deep out zone KOs out there to try to take away those uh, outside patterns. We have hard flats out there or shaded underneath vert, ho vert hooks. And so we're trying to take away the outside uh, throwing lanes, but while also still having a middle third defender and having a user in the middle of the field. So if they throw the ball on them, we, we want to force the opponent. The hardest throws in this game, if you think about it, are those corner routes, are the C routes. Like what I'm about to try to throw, that's the hardest type of, I should have thrown the tight end there. Um, that's the hardest type of throw in the game, the double corner route. Um, those are hard throws, and those are throws that if you mess them up, um, you know, you could throw interceptions really easily, okay? So... We want to make the throw as hard as possible. In real life, the reason that this works is due to the fact that... Um, can he can he please catch that? I don't know why I can't throw that route. I've been wanting, I've been trying to throw that route all day. Um, but in real life, that is also the hardest throw. If you think about it, this is why Nick Saban and Bill Belichick are such big advocates for cover three and cover one defenses is because those defenses make you have to throw the ball outside if they are coached, uh, and this is a, a key, if they are coached correctly. As you see right there, a bad pass lead by me, he gets a KO, we get this random bumping stuff that is the worst thing for, um, in my opinion, it's just terrible for the game, and, 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 and here we are. Here we are. Now I'm on a fourth down against someone that I should never be on a fourth down with. We'll see if we can throw this tight end corner out because hopefully he won't bump. He gets pressure. I don't know how he got pressure. And here we are. I blocked six people. Now I'm mad. So we got to get a stop because we're playing this stupid slot offset formation uh, where a hard flat is basically pointless. So what I like to do against this crap is I'll just man him up. Please throw it out. And you see, he won't throw it. So it is what it is. But this formation is good, man. Um, these little stupid RPOs, I think they're so bad for the game. Uh, I'm going to try this adjustment. Now he's going to go to an actual formation, maybe pass the ball. Five wide, demon, throw some seam streaks. So anyways, um, kind of back to what I was saying, though. You know, the whole idea of defense is you have to constrain the space. And you can do that with your uh, – one of the major things you can do that with is your user, right? Um, understanding where you're vulnerable at defensively and then and then uh, obviously trying to, to limit that vulnerability. It's like right here. I'm going to track it out here. Just take that away myself. Come back in here. That's not bad defense. It's not terrible. But anyway, those are some some uh, some of the ideas. So uh, I did want to talk about the logical progression. So in every defense, you have to know where you're vulnerable. Uh, no matter what defense you're running, you have to understand. And really, offense, I think this this actually applies to as well. Every offense that you run, you have to understand that there are inherent. Um, there is vulnerabilities in your, in your, in your scheme. Okay. There just are. Okay. No matter what formation you run, there are vulnerabilities. There are weaknesses. There are things, um, there is for defense, there is a no cover zone or there's a place in which you're not covering, uh, fundamentally. Okay. And then on offense, there is a place on the field also that you're not attacking or a player that you're not attacking with. Um, so those are all like factors, man, I'm really getting frustrated with this, with this stupid formation that he's running on defense. So those are all factors, right? Um, and so, uh, let me actually talk about this cause this is actually live and you're seeing this, this little stupid a gap blitz that he's running all this. Uh, we'll just deal with that like this. And the reason why that I know that works is because I know the coverage he's running. I understand 
the weaknesses of his defense. This talks a little bit about constraint theory plays. Like some of my base plays that I like to run, I like to run corner strike. I like to, um, you know, I like to run the double corner. I like to run Durham. I like to run wide trail, right? Those are some of my mainstay plays that I really, really want to throw, okay? It'd be great if I could catch that pass. It'd be just fantastic. And I can't get a pass lead where he doesn't throw the ball into the third row. So we're kind of in a dilemma with that route combo. I'll have to let that sit for a while. So anyway, those are those, these are the plays that I want to run. These are my main strip, mainstay. Like these are my my plays, right? Okay. He's running this random defense. I've never seen this defense. I've, I've I mean, I've, I don't think I've ever played this defense for more than a couple of plays this year, especially the way he's running this. Like I just don't understand what he's trying to accomplish. And there are things that are just wide open. One of those things is this little bubble screen because he's calling cover three every time. He's not manning up circle. And so this would be an example of a constraint theory play, a play in which a play in which if we execute these plays well, it will ensure and it will limit the op the options he can actually get into defensively. All right. That's a super, super big point. Not a lot of people think about that. The whole purpose of a bubble screen, uh, especially this year, while there are some people that run an entire offense basically around a bubble screen, most people in general are calling that because they're trying to force them to have to do a specific sequence of adjustments that will then, by very nature of them having to do those specific sequences of adjustments, open up your main offense. Um, that is that is what a constraint theory play does. It takes advantage of people that are doing random things and it puts them into essentially what I would call it funnels them into as he just lurked. Well, that's awesome. I just, <sighs> whatever. Um, I've never seen that before. I've never seen them actually catch that. Uh, but anyways, that's the whole idea of a constraint three play. It forces them to do a specific set of adjustments that then opens up the rest of your offense and, I'll, and, and, and really makes them have to question Okay, if I, it, it has to make them, they, they will have to start questioning over pursuing, okay? And it doesn't have to be a bubble screen. It could be a run play. It could be a jet sweep. It could be a play action play. I mean, you, it could be just a basic route combination that just, a, um, you know, like like an, a good example of a constraint theory play uh, from the bunch strong offset. So we know, you know how I like to run uh, the double corner concept where we have the short corner on the outside bunch receiver. Well, a really, really good variation of this would be to go to flood, and I'll show you what we're going to do. So we're going to fade the slot, and then we're going to put the tight end on this little corner. You could put the tight, you could put the slot receiver. Honestly, I don't know if this will be open. I think it is. Yeah, um, you can you can put the slot receiver on the corner out as well. So now to look almost identical to your corner strike, it's just we just change up who's going where, right? That's another uh, that's another really good example, I think, of constraint theory plays. You know, so those are just some things with that. Um, and they, they kind of help us again, continue to arrive at a logic. So in Madden, one of the other things that I did want to uh, just mention to you guys, if you guys didn't know this Madden in general, I've logged a lot of watched a lot of film. And basically what I've kind of discovered is in Madden, there's about off offensively, you're going to get about, <sighs> I just, I just, I'm so frustrated that I can't throw my wide open touchdowns. Um, I probably had a wide open touchdown to the left and I just didn't see it in Madden. You are going to have, um, what's the, what's the phrase I'm trying to say in Madden, you're going to have about 20 to 30 plays on offense and about 20 to 30 plays on, on defense. Okay. So if you think about it, this is another reason why, Madden players and Madden offenses don't require a lot of plays. Now, I really like, and I've always talked uh, a lot about this. Let's see if he just messes up here. Nope. I don't know why I threw that. That was dumb. I caught it. <laughs> um, so Madden players are uh, one of the offenses that I've talked a lot about historically is the air raid offense. And if you don't know what the air raid offense is, it is essentially the offense that Hal Mummy and Mike Leach designed and um, or, or essentially used to be like some of the, basically create some of the best um, 
quarterbacks that we've ever seen, especially in college, right? All right, let's see if we can go for this. Um, if he gives me a look to run the RPO, I'm going to run the RPO. They're famous for really simplifying their offense. They only really ran um, about four, I think it was like eight to 14 uh, passing plays. Oh, that was so stupid of me. Oh, thank goodness I had a timeout. I didn't know I had a timeout. <laughs> um, I really want to score here. <laughs> You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna I'm gonna audible to the RPO and then I'm gonna flip it and then we're gonna run it. If he gives us the look, if we don't, then we'll just take a delay. Uh, let's see if we can actually get it here. Like I feel like I should be able to run the ball right down the middle too. We gotta we gotta be. Get, I should have subbed Derrick Henry. And I don't know what I was just thinking. Oh, I'm making so many mistakes. Get to talking. Okay. So the air raid offense, famous. I get the ball at half, so it's really not that big of a deal. I should have just taken my three. I get ball at half. I put him down ten. It would have made it a, made him have to actually play. Have to actually have to actually have to be good. Um, but anyway, so the air raid offense, famous for having a really small a really small uh, collection of plays. Right, a really really small collection of plays. In fact, in the in the earliest renditions of the of the playbook, and if you ever hear how Mummy talk about this offense. They didn't use, they didn't use a playbook. That they, they literally have an, their entire offense. Excuse me. Um, they had their entire offense, and they didn't use a traditional playbook. They just used hand signals, and because the the playbook was uh, so small, they were able to to basically do this at a very high level. And they also like, and this was in contrast to a lot of the offenses of the time, um, and really even a lot of offenses that are still here today. So he's kind of showing pressure here. Let's see. He does blitz somehow. He gets an A-gap. Why wouldn't he? So anyways, um, so it was in contrast to the a lot of the offenses of that time period, right? A lot of that, that was kind of when Walsh was, if you were going to pass the ball, uh, as I throw a pick again, uh, <laughs> I don't know why I threw that. If you were going to pass the ball, you would have probably uh, wanted to study like Bill Walsh. You would want to be, that would be kind of your, your guide, um, right? So that's kind of the, the stage, so to speak, that in which the air raid offense was born into. And they took a lot of the uh, West Coast offensive concepts, but what they did differently than the West Coast offense is they really simplified it a lot. So, for example, one simple one simple example, in the air raid offense, they would have, uh, or the the West Coast offense had, I think, over twenty different pass protections on their on their system. The air raid offense had two, right? So that's kind of just one little way um, in which they were uh, they were different. Okay, this time we're not going to make the same mistake we made last time. We're going to sub in Derrick Henry here with his little pre-lit X factor, which I think is just at the end of the day, it's just good for the game. So anyways, um, they had, they simplified the West coast offense significantly. Like it was just such a Deion Sanders, bro. I can't score. Uh, I should be in something else, but we're just going to rock with this. Derrick Henry, just please get in. All right. Thank you. Okay. We can relax now. We finally scored a touchdown. We probably didn't throw the we, – we threw three picks on that drive and blah, 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 blah. Because when you're playing something like this, it's just these random formations that I feel like I'm like, oh. <laughs> you know, I, I'm like, oh, you can get a <laughs> – I, I think that's interesting that um, when you play something random, it makes it honestly harder, um, which I guess for my off-meta guys out there, that would be – a reason to run and learn an off meta scheme. But I do think it also has to, we have to do some critical thinking on my end and say, okay, he's running this. What can he realistically get? And how can I, how can I counter it? And I haven't really done that much this game because I saw a slot offset and I was already mad. <laughs> All right, right here. I'm just trying to take away those little flat passes. And make him have to throw it. Uh, he threw his man up. I was hoping that would guard that. Yeah, this guy just... Uh, I just hate people that play. I don't like playing stuff like this. I just think it's so weird. Uh, like I said, I think if you just get super simple, um, 
I wonder if I can back these guys off. I'm going to get out there myself. Just try to go make a tackle. Uh, but anyways, so air raid offense, super, super simplified the uh, traditional the traditional way in which offense was approached in their time, right? Yeah, that works. I just back those guys off. So because of that, um, that change up, it kind of opened people's eyes to this new newfound simplicity of, of offensive football. They were, they were taking players that were just, I mean, just were like not high draft picks and they, they weren't supposed to be good. They would take quarterbacks that didn't even have good arm and they would, they would be able to uh, basically just put some crazy statistics up uh, from a, you know, just from a, like I said, from a statistical perspective, they were just really good. Um, they, they would always, pretty much always uh, lead the league in passing. And there were just so many reasons as to why they were so good, right? Uh, but when you look back at it, one of the things that they talked about that was really interesting is part of the purpose of the simplicity so part of the purpose of them saying, okay, we want to have a really simple uh, approach to things. Can you work that? Uh, we want to have a really simple approach to thing is so that we can spend a significant amount of energy on and resources and all that on mastering the execution of what we select. So much so that in their day, if they would take a, like, let's say that, Let's say that, you know, they wanted they, they were like, okay, well, we, we found a play we really want to put in the offense. What's really interesting to me is they had this kind of basic rule of thumb where every play that they wanted to put into the offense after they had their set plays. And, and for them, it was about, I want to say it was um, eight plays, eight concepts, and I think 14 total plays was like the original, um, the original air raid offense. So what was interesting is they, they kind of had this rule of thumb that if they ever if they ever went in a situation right where they where they had to uh, or they wanted to change or they wanted to add something by their their rule they had to remove a play that they had in their system right the reason I think this is significant for us as as Madden players and really just people that are trying to what I would say is master a discipline or skill which is which madden is i think at the, at the core it's a video game there's deliberate practice involved i talk a lot about i talked to, in the beginning about the flow state at which you know the video game uh world allows you to enter into at the highest of level madden to a degree i don't know if the right word would be would be an art form or science or both or what but it's it's basically the closest thing we have um, as people that are not 6'8", 250, or whatever, it's the closest thing we have to sports, um, to, a, to a sport form, okay? And, and, and within that, there is, there is these principles that you learn uh, from the real football world, from business, from basketball, from all kinds of walks of life. And that is in the air raid system, it was simplicity and it was how could they actually get by with having so few plays? Well, they had to be intention. This is the key thing. They had to be intentional with what those small selection of plays offered them. And I think this is something in Madden we don't think about. We can't, um, you know, you can run an unlimited amount of offensive and defensive plays. But those plays, as Ty Law gets burned, uh, <laughs> um, I should have unbased the line. He probably wouldn't have got burned. Okay, so um, you have you have these like, and, and and also very true. Like you can do an unlimited amount of adjustments defensively. Um, you can you can run so many different formations and blitzing concepts. There's so much, um, and then there's this principle of in the world of. And I've talked about this before. There's this kind of Bruce Lee principle that I'm I'm pretty fond of talking about, and that is, he'll say, I, I I fear the man that I don't fear the man that practiced one or a thousand kicks once. I fear the man that has practiced one kick a thousand times. What he, what that quote essentially means is because if you think that out practically. If you've practiced one kick a thousand times, that means you have practiced that one kick against a lot of different t 
types of people. You've practiced it against a lot of different types of situations. Um, you've seen how maybe people would counter that. These are some of the reasons why, um, you know, simple is, is always best as I, I have just made terrible reads this game. This has not been a good video of me making reads and I'm going to let him score because I want the ball back. Um, Gosh, I'm so frustrated with how I've played offensively this game. And, and uh, frustrated. Okay. So, anyways, so that's the idea. So, the point being that whenever we're implementing stuff, we have to be intentional about the plays that we're choosing, the route combos that we're choosing. And they have to actually do something specific. Otherwise, they're random. And if they're random, they're going to lead to what I would say is they're going to random plays lead to random results. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, but you really don't have um, a, a, a clear pulse or a clear, I don't know why you would onside kick there. That's crazy to me. Um, you don't have a clear pulse or a clear picture as to why things are happening. And there's no... So again, therefore, and it's like kind of like this guy's playing. Um, he actually does have kind of, I guess, a logic behind it. But you see this a lot in Madden. You guys have always probably uh, played random players where they just do the most random things. And it's like, oh, I, <laughs> you know, that's just like I've never seen that before. And the thing is, they might make, a, they might get a couple of good results. Again, random uh, random systems lead to random results. Random plays lead to random results. And what do I mean by that? Well, this guy randomly has lurked me a couple times. He's done some really good adjustments now. Um, but over the time, if I ever played this guy again, or if I ever played this defense again, I would probably be in a lot better situation because my system is designed to be able to attack every single possible thing that he could do. Right. Very, very important. And in if we go back to the core definition of offense and defense, what's a defense trying to do? A defense is trying to constrain the space at which the offense has to be able to score. Okay. It's why um, in Madden 24, you're seeing a lot of this, but this basic tenet of let me try to play bend, but don't break defense until they get to about the 20 yard line, because I can use the end zone as an extra defender. All right. It's the same logic behind using the sideline as an extra defender. Right. So, so anyways, that's, that's really, really important because it, it gives us a picture at which we can see that the, the main purpose of the defense is to try to constrain the space that is available to the offense. And the offense's main objective is to create space. This is part of why compression formations are better because from a compression alignment, you are running your receivers into a plethora of space that is available. Super, super important. Okay. So we take all of this stuff together and what do you come back with? Well, your defense has to have plays and adjustments that is going to specifically limit the space. And what I would suggest is that that those set of, those sequences of adjustments and those decisions that you make is like okay this is my main bunch defense it constrains the space on the field at which the mo majority of the plays are attacking so of the most popular bunch plays that we're going to face this is what they are going to attack okay and we can typically understand that just from some film study from that though you want to have a couple other plays and a couple other defenses that their purpose is to open or um, that their purpose is essentially to take away the space that would then be made available by the way that you are choosing to play. Come on, let me catch that Madden. Give me something. Perfect. So hopefully that makes sense. So same kind of principle. If we take it to the offensive side, same kind of principle. So like for me, where does the space on the field that the double corner concept attacks? It attacks deep. It attacks to the right side. It attacks to the middle. And then it attacks like kind of the short middle of the field. And then if I put the running back on a route, he'll, he'll attack to that side as well. 
right? So those are some of the key elements of it, as he should have got a lurk artist pick, because I can't throw the ball, man. Maybe I do need Gunslinger. Um, okay, so then when I call, let's say, for example, I call Durham. Well, where does this play attack? Well, it attacks the flat area of the field to the right. It then attacks the short middle, and then it attacks high low to the left side. So that that is um, in, in, in the most, like, simplest form the essence of offense and defense you're trying to attack space you're trying to constrain space you want to choose formations that allow you to attack the most space with the routes they give you with the combination of the routes and alignment that they provide in defense you want to um you you also want to a little bit different, but you you want to choose a formation that allows you to constrain the most space while allowing you to have different types of pressure because pressure is kind of the X factor of defense where we can disrupt their timing. Um, you know, some people just, you know, they can't, they can't beat the blitz, right? So we need to always have, in any defense, we always need to have a pressure plan. So I wouldn't say that's like a necessarily like a, Obviously, if you're playing any kind of defense, though, you do want to have, um, you know, the best, most optimized blitz in the game possible. So you have that little factor in there, too. But whenever you're calling your defense, you need to have a logic behind it. You need to have a logic behind what space on the field you're actually trying to take away. And if you do that, that will literally take your defense to the next level. If we think about cover four drop. I talk about this a lot in cover four drop. This free safety zone blitz, these are two very good defenses. What they're designed to do, if you think about it, is they're designed to take away the deep uh, outside throws, the, uh, the short outside throws, and they're trying to force everything into what I call the mid-range of Madden. <sighs> and Tylaw might be cut after this game. Uh, I put, Did I not put Bo Jackson in a quarter? I literally wanted him in a quarter so that he could defend that. Let's take a look at the replay. I just I deserve to lose this game. Look at this look at this inside quarter. Maybe I put him in a hook curl. Nope, he's in an inside quarter and he got burned like that. Yep. Okay. Perfect. Alright, well at least he's going to bunch something that I actually have a frame of mind against how to defend this. What he'll probably run the ball. Why wouldn't he? Right at my guy. There it is. GG's. Get out of there. Winfield. So anyways, um, so you have to you have to constrain the space. So like right there, we use the end zone, or we use, oh we went for two. Oh, he did score, huh? I thought was <laughs> I thought I was getting the ball. Um, okay, so same logic here, but now just think this like this is we we have the ability to constrain space right there. We use the end zone as a additional defender. So we didn't need to have deep zones. We just put cloud flats on the outside, hook shaded down hook curls in the middle of the field, and the space is just so constrained, it's hard to be able to attack all that. So that's that's kind of the idea. Is this guy just trying to scream at me? There's double corner, finally doing what we wanted it to do. I will give this guy some credit. He, for some reason, his outside third really did do a decent job of, of defending the short corner routes, uh, which you don't see much. But this is my favorite. This is the route combo I want to work. Because look at this. So this looks exactly the same as double corner. But what we get here is we get a high low to the left. And then we get the seam streak to the circle receiver. So in a perfect world, what we would be able to do is hit this C route right there. Um, that the, the crosser would be able to pull would be able to pull the C route. Unfortunately, um, you know, that that sometimes happens, sometimes doesn't. But anyway, it's going to go ahead and kneel this one. You know this one out. Thanks for watching. Didn't play my best game. Got the W. Talked about some different things I've been thinking about. Let me know what you think about that kind of stuff. Like, how do you choose what you call on defense? How do you choose what you call on offense? How do you decide uh, what your adjustments are and when you make those adjustments? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. To get all my ebooks, join the Patreon. The link is in the description.